Hey, what's up guys? I'm Kelly Norton. I'm known as the AZ Realty Lady. I'm a Valley native and a real estate agent of over 20 years right here in Phoenix. I help people that look to buy or sell homes in Phoenix and the surrounding areas. Uh, so if you are in the market to buy or sell, just uh, shoot me a text or give me a call. It's the best way to reach me. Today's video is gonna be about some relevant topics that you're hearing in today's market. So you could call it a market update or you could call it just me shooting it real with you. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kelly Norton, your AZ Realty Lady at EXP Realty. Count on me for all things Arizona real estate. So for those of you that are new to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell, that way you'll, notify, uh, you'll be notified when I put up new videos. And uh, so today I'm gonna talk about some things you might be hearing in real estate. So you might hear some buzz terms. Uh, we'll go over that. We'll go over um, some different options that you have to get the rates down. You've heard in a couple of my videos where we talk about different ways to get the rate down. And there are two main ways to get the interest rate down right now. A lot of lenders are pushing this 2-1 buy down. Um, and that's where they can keep the interest rate low for the first few years, and then it goes up um, on the third year. Now, one thing that I wanna chat with you about this is, you know, a lot of people don't plan to um, hold their home that long, and so they would need to sell their home before that three years is up, and that's absolutely fine. That's not a problem. But let me tell you that the average person in all the past 20 years that I've done real estate have kept their home for five to seven years. And the National Association of Realtors is actually saying that people are now staying in their homes 12 to 13 years. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that you, you have as much information about what your future plans are. Real estate is not intended to be that quick flip investment. It is meant to be more of a buy and hold type investment. If you're purchasing it to just turn around and flip it, then yeah, that might not be a, a bad option if you only plan to stay there for a couple years. But remember, if you're gonna stay under two, you wanna look into capital gains as well. So another way to get your interest rate down is to have the seller pay for it to go down. Yeah, that's right, have the seller pay for it. So in today's market, we are seeing a little more negotiation happening. Sellers want to have their homes get sold and they're sitting on the market longer than what they're used to. So what we're seeing is buyers asking for the sellers to pay for anywhere from like 10 to 13,000 in closing costs. And the buyers use that money to pay down their interest rate. So sellers be prepared for that right now. This is common and it is something that's happening and trust me you would rather see a 10 to thirteen thousand dollar credit come over on an offer than to be sitting on the market for 90 days and then have to reduce your price 20 25 thousand and then get a lower offer then because at that point you're chasing the market down so you want to get out in front of the market price it right to begin with and allow those buyers to make offers that they feel are fair and then you and the buyer uh, with your agents can start the negotiation process, but at least you have an offer on the table to work with, right? <laughs> Buying down the interest rate. So buyer asking the seller to help pay for that. Very common, we're seeing it right now. Another thing that you might wonder as a seller is, well, I'm gonna keep my price high and offer in the listing to buy down that interest rate. Be careful with that. Let's say you wanna price your home at 765 and there's a $15,000 um, credit that you're offering to the buyer. Buyers that are looking up to 750 aren't even gonna see your listing. So you just missed out on a ton of buyers that otherwise would have seen your listing. In my experience, it's actually better to get the price right and offer to the buyer that you would be willing to negotiate a credit. If we need to go above asking, fine but you want to at least get the exposure you want to at least get the offer on the table not every buyer will need that so i would say that you want to target the masses with the right price before you are thinking about only that credit let's talk about something else relevant in today's market you will probably hear that you want to date the rate and marry the home 
There are so many realtors that are saying this right now. Date the rate, marry the home. So what they mean by that is the rate could be temporary. Buy the home that you want for permanent. Totally get it. I absolutely understand what they're saying. But you also want to make sure that you can afford that date. <laughs> Don't go on the date if you can't afford the person you're going with, right? So if you can't afford that that payment and that rate, then don't buy the house, okay? You still have to do what's right for you. So find an agent that is experienced, a lender that is experienced, and make sure you have these conversations with them and what that looks like. I've seen, I saw in, in the past, and I just worry that people are going to jump in and date the rate and then not be able to afford it because what happens if they get a, a, a job that lays them off or something, you know? So make sure that you have a plan just in case, you know, things go to really. <laughs> just plan for it because it's it's really a sad day when people call me and tell me they're losing their house, what can they do? And, and I just don't want to see that happen. I don't think that we're really in a market like that um, at all, but let's not get to that point. Let's plan ahead. When you are dating the rate and marrying the home, it is also a great thing to just get in the market. So this is me, you know, being kind of the devil's advocate, right? So I just told you, be careful, be careful about buying. I'm not saying don't buy. I'm saying make sure you can afford the rate that you're going on a date with. Because if I wouldn't have jumped in the market when I did in my young 20s, I went in at a high interest rate. I think it was like eight and a half, nine percent on my first house. Prices were lower, but guys, income was lower as well. So you have to think about that. Interest rates were higher, prices were lower, but we all made less, right? So it's still somewhat relative. If I had not jumped in the market and then refinanced two years later, when the interest rates dropped down into the high sixes, I would have never got my foot in the door because even back then prices started to go up. I couldn't have afforded the house, but at least I got in when I did and then continued to kind of move up from there. So when you're looking at real estate, it is an investment. It's far better to put your money into that investment than to waste it on rent. Over time, it is still proven to be a better investment. Even if you're getting it at a higher interest rate, there usually are opportunities for you to refinance. And there are predictions from, from FHA, from uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that you know they're predicting next year that the rates would be four and a half to five and a half percent. So again, just a prediction, but hopefully there'll be a chance for you to refinance in the future or just buy down your rate now with asking the seller. So I hope that this gave you kind of a different way to look at things today. Again, I'm Kelly Norton. I'm the AZ Realty Lady. I'm known for kind of thinking outside the box and telling you how it is um, in a different way. So hopefully you found this useful and subscribe to the channel, click the bell and call me or text me if I can help you with your purchase or your home sale. Take care. Have a good day.